Harsha and Repa jointly present Professor Iyer's talk show Future of Energy India Vision 2022 India's first talk show on energy and power Co-partners MTU Onsite Energy and BSG Associate Partner BHEL supported by Jindal Power Limited and Patel Engineering Limited Segment Partner Green Brilliance Energy a Falcon Media Production Welcome to the show Future of Energy India Vision 2022 and we bring to you the viewers the last but a very power packed session and this is on demand side management and smart grid with me today is shri anil razan former secretary power government of india on my left on my right dr rudesh khanna who is the director business Strat business development strategy for mto on site energy germany on his right is shri swendra nagila one of the best experts and minds in the country on smart grid issues and demand side management he is the managing director of sugan automatics on my left after mr razan is mr sc sharma who is the president in jindal power limited on my extreme left is our very good friend and colleague mr hetal mehta who is the joint president of renewable energy promotion association welcome all for this last but not the least of the sessions to enlighten may I first ask is india really ready for a smart grid you know here people want electricity first so are we really in a shape to really appreciate the movement towards a technology aspect like smart rasan sir well i'd say you see that uh, all grids pretend to be smart it's only a question of trying to get smarter in the times to come because even the present uh, development particularly through our power grid corporation it's one of the best managed national grids in the country in terms of the total megawattage of power it handles across the regions 24000 megawatts going up to 28000 megawatts in few years which can be transferred from one portion of the country to the other integration of gradual integration i should say of five regional grids into two okay. grids at the moment but now hopefully very soon into a whole national grid which is common already moving and the compulsions of the situation that we when when we want to do demand side management when we want to have diverse sources of generation into the system particularly the new renewables we will need grids that are smarter the power sector as i view today is not comprised of three elements any longer it comprises of four elements the generation transmission distribution and consumer all four if they have to interact i think the grid particularly at the end of the consumer has to get smarter he's got to be able to use it like he uses his pc in an elementary way he's got to be able to trade his power requirements maybe on the grid when he needs how much when the when the grid tariffs become more mobile and not fixed and ossified regardless of time of day and the constraints on the system the whole system has to i would say not only smart it has to react in an intelligent way and you have to have a grid which is a two way talk so when we talk of demand side management which is the subject of your think uh, discussion today i think demand side management only makes sense number one if you make a grid interactive the consumer can participate number 2 if power is priced appropriately and properly so that then there is the imperative of going in for demand side management right khanna sir do you see that in a country where we are now in a situation where 40% transmission and distribution losses is talked about so seriously technology can play a role because we try to see Uh, the other alternative that is the physical security and all of that has failed so card monitoring measurement and a kind of smart grid approach of technology bring substantially those losses down uh, professor you are absolutely right uh, communication is one of the major issues uh, among the uh, establishing of smart grids and uh, here also renewable should play a very strong role 
because they can cover up the gaps between the energy supply and demand and balance certain uh, erratic uh, behaviors which are currently taking place. And one of the major issues is you have to have efficient, efficient energy supply, efficient power supply, generation, distribution, and these are all elements of the smart grid which you have to integrate. And as Mr. Raza said, it has to be interactive. And for that, you need very fast and good communication system. Okay. I now take this question forward to Mr. Surendra Nagila. See, we have the national mission for enhanced energy efficiency on one side. The, they form the part of the national action plan for climate change, where solar is one mission and this is another excellent mission. And incidentally, that does not talk about energy efficiency as a subject on the distribution side. So do you see there is a case here to bring that, to incentivize so that a smart grid approach can not only benefit from the APDRP model, but also the energy efficiency uh, related investments. I think originally this uh, national energy efficiency has been formed. I think totally there was eight focus areas. Out of that, uh, one was this particular area where energy efficiency was the main issue. There I think they also touched about the distribution transformer, the appliances and also who saved and who will be paying the credit points and it can be tradable. A lot of things have been discussed in that. But end of the day today what we are trying to say is that we are in a peculiar situation. One side we are talking about 5 star rating of a refrigerator, the air conditioner at the consumer place but we do not rate the distribution transformer to that level and we need to really bring in a strict norm for the DISCOM also to put in that type of distribution transformer where you have the quality of power and also the low core losses and third important thing is that is the thing is a cash box for any discom whatever you generate let it be renewable let it be idle whatever you generate end of the day the distribution transformer gives you the money. So thanks to the technology today the smart grid has come in the right time. So on that note we will just come back to you in a short time. Welcome you back after the short break. And we are continuing our discussions on demand side management and smart grid. Sarmaji, do you feel this is the way the technology has to move? Kya hume isko kam karna hai? Matlab, agar hume really 10% se 15% mein pehle lana hai T&D loss ko. Kyunki planning commission ki pehle mansa thi ki bhai, hum 11 plan tak isko 15% ke niche le aayenge. Lekin nahi la paaye. To kya technology aur ye incentivization of technology ye mudda ban sakta hai humare liye? Yes, I definitely feel you see in any uh, I mean losses if it is to be reduced technology is one of the thing and particularly in today's techno technological innovation which is going on particularly uh, to make the grid more smarter to reduce the various losses particularly on the demand side but metering very efficient metering system has to be there from that the old type of systems must get changed to the innovative technological system so that the losses and ultimately because now we are going towards the privatization. Everywhere the distribution companies are all privatized because the electricity boards were not able to manage the distribution side of the management. And under the government of India policy, the distribution companies have been already now in almost all the states they have been established and everybody I mean is a commercial so once you are a commercial oriented the technology has to come into play I fully agree that the technological innovations on in the smart grid must come up Rajan sir hmm. I come back to you on this still 80 percent of our discounts are making losses the reports clearly tell us that they are in bad shape there is no change even after the reforms are adapted. It almost seems that the APDRP1 has gone down the drain. No, not really because I think the process has just begun. APDRP you see consists of two components. One is the compulsory component which is that you plot all the consumers, you, you meter everybody. First of all, you freeze the frame, everything, input, output, everything should be metered so that you have complete energy audit. And the government of India has to pay 100% cost to that. The other part is 
at part B, you can take your loans for it, you can convert some of this into grant provided you meet those standards of coming down to your desired level that is 15 percent from wherever you are at the moment. Maybe the process has just started off, it, people took time in taking off, but I think technology has to come in particularly to check where man has failed, machine must come in, technology must come in to eliminate power thefts. We have got to replace the human element, replace it with, with uh, technology or a machine, whatever you might call it that if anybody tampers with the system, it says do not touch, you cannot molest an electricity supply line somewhere and moment there is a case of molestation, <laughs> there must be an immediate reaction and an arrest or something right. like that, at least his power supply must be cut off. Well, that technology can do today and I think that we have got to be a little more stern and ask the states that look here, you have got the money, now let us get going with the business. Even the some of the new suggestions that are coming in of you know, rescuing the distribution companies in distress. One of the suggestions is I think that you must implement our APDRP in, in spirit and do it fast. You must increase your tariffs. So all this the health of the distribution sector is extremely important. But Professor, I must get back to the national mission of enhanced energy efficiency. I think you see this is a mission that uh, has not really been properly understood. It has uh, two components. One is the performance, perform, achieve and trade part of it. We are almost 462 uh, I think uh, industries in, in eight sectors have been studied and uh, norms have been laid out for them and if they attain their level of efficiency, they can trade their uh, uh, whatever their overachievements. The other part is the demand side management. While on the first <coughs> see scheme, the expected investment in four years is about 75,000 crores. In the second part, there is demand side management, municipal and uh, individual. It is about 22,000 I think crores a little more than that. So these schemes will only be successful if you get on to a strict regimen on many areas that you got to conform to efficiency norms. And I would entirely agree with uh, Dr. here that we must bring distribution companies also as designated consumers, not only the transformers. The whole distribution company should be declared as a designated consumer and it must distribute electricity efficiently right. and according to norms. In fact, that is a suggestion that I made to the Director General Bureau of Energy Efficiency that even if you have to amend the act, do please it. do so. May I go back to Hethul Mehta, may I request him to throw the light. Gujarat mein ye jo losses hain ye 15 percent ke kareeb aagai hain, niche nahi aagai hain, lekin uske aspas hain. To ye ek state kar paaya hai and I think uh, maybe a couple of other states will follow suit after Gujarat has done it, you know. What, what was it that Gujarat took over a lot of technology adoption? Like there are examples like Getco who have adopted a lot of technology and I think smart grid pilots are already trying to be uh, uh, modeled in Gujarat, right? Yes, see, first of all, what we say, technology has to move with time. That is the base, what we understand. Second, you must have will to win. And third, you have to develop the culture. And all together working, we are able to achieve it. This is the base because un only technology cannot work unless you develop the culture. We will come back to you and we will discuss whether privatization in the distribution sector has really succeeded in the country. Back right after this. Break. Welcome back to this segment, uh, Mr. Nagila. How do you see? a company driven by technology, it is wanting to offer something. But what are the challenges for a company which has an offering to make an idea like a smart grid pilot, offer this to let us say a utility? We have a different set of, uh, set of problems. This is a common word whenever you go to any discount, you will find that we also have it and we do not require it, we know about it. You need partners in that. Now when it comes to the question of executing it, 
there is no special force or a skill set where you can absorb such technologies or such skill set to bring it either a smart grid, leave alone smart grid, even reduction of losses and bringing some streamlining of the system, you need a different mindset of people because they are bogged down everyday problems where they are neck deep. You cannot ask them to take extra burden of understanding something and then implement it at a particular cost. Nobody wants to take a risk there. There is nothing more one, one can think about in the system. We are going to discuss whether India's power sector benefited at large from the privatization expert aspect. First, Rajdhan sir, we did all this privatization of distribution with a lot of fanfare and we said, oh, well, it's magic wand and come on, you know, all this distribution laws in a few years will go. And what we found is it, it probably remained the same. We did corporatization of the distribution sector. We did not do privatization. Privatization was very sparse. It was done in Urissa with not much success. It was done in Delhi, I think, with a reasonable degree of success where the government subsidies have been done away with and uh, the quality of power supply has improved. In other places, you see, we are at times we become captives of our own ideological barriers that we build around us unnecessarily. We have agreed to have a franchise system in many places, but we will not privatize. In terms of the distribution franchising. Yes, precisely. So that is not true privatization, but there was, you see, for example, revenue franchisee, there could be an input franchisee. And I think there is no point in having a revenue model because you just don't want somebody to go and collect your money for you. You need that system to be improved. Quite surprisingly, the restructured APDRP has not been extended to private distribution companies. It's an interesting point. Yes. And we said that maybe we will review it after two years. There were some objections raised that why should the private sector get benefit out of it. No, it is not the private sector. It is the consumer. All this is for the consumer. The consumer continues to be a private person. Exactly. So I think we must extend this restructured APDRP to the entire distribution community, first, to, first of all. And I think ideology, if some of them feel that they can only do with a franchisee and not with uh, absolute privatization, by all means. There is also one danger you see in some privatizations that if you hand over everything to the private mode in our kind of an economy and if that company fails, who comes and sits in its place as a replacement? So wherever possible, I think we should keep a little mix to begin with of uh, public sector and private sector companies so that there is some stability in the system. If the whole system becomes established and a way of life, so to say that is what we wanted in the restructured APDRP that you watch their performance continuously over five years and assess them each year so that that loss reduction becomes a way of life and not a once in a flash pan incident. So once 5, 10, 15 years these companies have coexisted, cultures will exist, we will know that what are the robust models that have been developed, then I think we can maybe privatize everything. But if public sector and private sector can coexist as they do in the city of Mumbai, why not? Right. I would further add to that, you know, we have the public sector, the private sector and also the cooperative sector in this country. So, we are a little bit different in terms of the model. Now, I will like to give our speakers the last 10 seconds, each one, you know, what are the two or three things that they want for distribution efficiency or reforms in this country? Starting with, you know, an out, literally a worldwide view, an overview from Dr. Khanna, please. As Mr. Raza has pointed out, there has to be a, some balance and some regulation there because otherwise uh, private companies may misuse that also. You see, so we have to look into that. But that is something which has to come into the policy and which has to be reviewed fast because the appreciation of time value of money is not there yet, you see, I think. Very good. Nagila sir. Distribution franchisee is the only answer for implementation of technology without any barrier and secondly because there is a carrot and stick type of yeah. environment. And second thing is that should also take care that the consumer should be grid smart. Sharmaji. The distribution side as well as the smart grid 
they have to go hand in hand and the technology innovations which have come into the world must be brought back into this distribution management and we must see that ultimately the consumer also gets benefited it is not only the distribution company which gets benefit we are waiting for the day when the consumer will decide from which we should buy the power from to buy the phone to buy the, the choice to the consumer for choice will with the consumer ultimately we are waiting for the day when the consumer will have the choice what has come out of this excellent discussion and is that we have to pay a price for electricity we need to adopt technology definitely technology is an important element of change and one thing is there instead of creating more capacity if we can put about a crore or 10 million per megawatt to change the dimension and retrieve back 20 percent or 30 percent of electricity it's far more economical and far more advisable and with that with all these new solutions and a little bit of risk taking political will and a common grit and definitely the consumer making him the king and maybe god at times right <laughs> we will go and definitely succeed thank you all viewers we'll be back on this show with you with another power packed set of episodes goodbye and good luck thank you inertia and repa jointly present professor ayer's talk show future of energy india vision 2022 india's first talk show on energy and power co-partners mtu on site energy and bsq associate partner bhel supported by jindal power limited and patel engineering limited segment partner green brilliance energy a falcon media production